Qualcomm's very first five nanometer processed node technology driven chipset, the Snapdragon 888, is finally here and the Xiaomi Mi 11 is the first device to debut it. The Xiaomi is all the way on the left and its older brother, the Mi 10 Ultra, is all the way on the right hand side. Between those two we have two more 5 nanometer chips on the Huawei and iPhone and a 7 nanometer plus chipped Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. We have updated them all to the latest available software here, Android 11 on the Xiaomi, Android 10 on the rest of the devices, and iOS 14 on the iPhone. The Xiaomi Mi 11, Huawei, and iPhone are all running on 5 nanometer process node technology, while the Samsung and Mi 10 Ultra are running on slightly older 7 nanometer plus tech. The only phone still stuck at 60 hertz here is the iPhone 12. The Mate 40 Pro has 90 hertz, which is more than enough if you ask me, and the overkill devices here the other three are all kitted with 120 hertz refresh rate panels. The Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra is the only device here that has a native Full HD plus panel at 1080p. Nothing needs to be changed over there. The iPhone 12 Pro Max cannot be changed and it's, it's somewhere between Full HD and QHD. The Samsung cannot run QHD and 120 hertz at the same time. So we've dropped it down to Full HD so that it can rock 120 hertz. Matching that is the Mi 11 and Mate 40 Pro, bringing them both down to match the rest of the devices here at Full HD+. Plus. We have Game Turbo on the Xiaomi devices, Performance Mode and Game Space on the Huawei, no performance options on the iPhone, and the Samsung has High Performance Mode and Focus on Performance when gaming. All the Android phones are updated to the latest version of Antutu, version 8.5.2, while the iPhone is still rocking 8.3.7. I'm really excited to see how these brand spanking new 5 nanometer chips compare to the older Gen 7 nanometer plus. This is Technic, and without further ado, let's go. We're going to start you out by checking the battery percentage at the start of the test. We will go ahead and compare this once we've reached the end of the test and I'll test out the milliamp hour per minute readings in relation to how long the test actually takes. We're going to be using an emissivity level of 0.5 on my infrared heat gun over here in order to test out heat dissipation from the start and once again we're going to compare this at the end of the test. So stay tuned for that one to see which one gets hotter. But as of right now, the hottest on the table right now is the Mi 11 and the coolest is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Starting the three five nanometer process node tech phones on the left hand side at the same time and the two seven nanometer node tech phones on the right hand side at the same time, we're now in 100% real time. I speed up certain parts of the Antutu version eight so I don't keep you guys here for too long. But right now we're focusing on how smooth it is. The first part of Antutu version eight is not that demanding when it comes to CPU and GPU performance, all of them look absolutely fantastic. You must bear in mind that the Snapdragon 865 and 865 Plus on the Samsung and the Mi 10 Ultra respectively are still very, very good chipsets. And from my understanding and my testing, the ones on the left hand side aren't actually that much better, though they are better the second part of Antutu that we're in right now. Can't really notice much of a difference between all of them once more because this is a pretty easy part of the benchmark. The most graphic intense part of this benchmark is of course this Terracotta Soldier part, which is the third part of Antutu version 8. Now you can notice a little more of a difference. The Snapdragon 888 all the way on the left hand side is just so silky smooth, it is ridiculous. The Mate 40 Pro is pretty much just as smooth as well as the iPhone, but you can definitely now see or notice that the Snapdragon 865 and 865 Plus, Note 20 Ultra and Mi 10 Ultra are suffering a tad over here. There is a tiny little bit of lagginess when it comes to this part of Antutu, and they were sitting at around 15 frames per second when I did my FPS counter check on this part of Antutu the start of last year. I'll have to do that again this year, so stay tuned for that one, but I'm pretty sure that the three phones on the left hand side are sitting closer to 30 FPS as opposed to the two on the right, which were somewhere between 15 and 20. Nice and smooth for all devices here. We're moving on to the scrolling effects of all phones. Now, of course, the iPhone tends to run through and Tutu version 8 quicker than the rest of them. So we're gonna get to that right now. And yes, we're still at 60 Hertz in 2021. You do feel it. It's not so much looking at it, but it's more of how it actually feels when you're scrolling around. And you can see here between 120 Hertz all the way on the left and the Huawei with 90 Hertz is not too much of a big difference, but let's jump into those battery drain results. Even though the Xiaomi Mi 11 has the biggest 4,600 milliamp hour battery out of the lot over here, it drained the most. It dropped by 7%, and it was draining by a rate of 26.8 milliamp hours per minute. The iPhone 12 Pro Max drained by only 5% with a significantly smaller battery, 
literally a thousand milliamps smaller and it had a rate of discharge of 15.4 milliamp hours per minute. When it comes to device temperature, the Xiaomi Mi 11 once again is the worst over here. It reached a peak of 54 degrees in Celsius at the end of the test compared to the next hottest, which is the Mi 10 Ultra with 49.2. The coolest was the iPhone 12 Pro Max with 42.4. The Xiaomi Mi 11 added 15.5 degrees Celsius. Of course, we saw it coming. The new Snapdragon 888 powered Xiaomi Mi 11 got crowned first place with 696,011 points, which is great. But think about this for a second. Third place is the Mi 10 Ultra with 668. Now, if you work that out, the difference between them is only a 4% increase toward the Mi 11. But the good thing in the Mi 11's favor is that it's actually cheaper than the Mi 10 Ultra. But if all you want is performance, you can pick up much cheaper Snapdragon 865 powered smartphones. But the five nanometer chipset within the Mi 11 is supposed to be more efficient in terms of battery efficiency. That didn't really prove to be the case, though I will be doing a battery drain test soon, so stay tuned for that one. Mate 40 Pro was crowned second place, literally a thousand, less than a thousand points Behind the Mi 11, the Note 20 Ultra was dead last and just in front of that, the iPhone 12 Pro Max with the highest score I've received for the 12 Pro Max at 638,000 points, which is still fantastic. The best CPU was allocated to the Mi 11 and the worst CPU to the Note 20 Ultra. Worst GPU, Note 20 Ultra once more. Best GPU, Xiaomi Mi 11. The best memory this time around, surprisingly the Mate 40 Pro. Worst memory, Note 20 Ultra, no surprise over there. The worst user experience though, flipped around, it's the Mate 40 Pro this time. And the best is the Mi 11. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. A sub to the channel would be fantastic. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.